Lena. When she realized I'd found her, her expression softened. She seemed apologetic, but wasn't going to speak a word. I wouldn't accept that silence and scream the question at her. Rena was in a panic, with tears welling up in her eyes. But it was obvious that she'd been following me. Not worried enough to remove the needles from your food, but still worried. Thinking about how I'd been acting up until now, it wasn't hard to imagine that my behavior could have been perceived as strange. Serena was concerned. At a quick glance, that's how it would seem. But I wasn't going to let my guard down that easily. Even if that was really the case, she still wouldn't have to do something like try to tail me. She should have called out to me when I was leaving and gone right with me. But Rena didn't do that. She kept her distance from me and matched my walking speed. On top of that, she matched the sound of her footsteps and deviously tried to hide her presence from me. Then, after she realized I noticed she was there, she held her breath as she tried hiding from me. She wore a timid expression that would force one to take pity on her, but without a doubt, she was tailing me. <laughs> Still glaring at Rinna, I continued walking onward. After I'd walked for a bit, she ignored my command and began walking again, so I yelled at her once more. <laughs> Okay, Chi. You're getting a little mean here, I don't know. If there's anyone else nearby, they're gonna say you're a jerk. I moved out of the way and waved my bat violently to urge her forward. I bet you would! You food needler! <laughs> Making a pitiful expression, she meekly squeaked out the words in a voice that she knew would cut into my heart. That agitated me to no end. I knew it was a lie. If you wanted to go home together, then you should have called out to me. Now you're just blurting out random lies. Not as sorry as you're gonna be, now get moving. It seemed that the seething anger within me was written all over my face. Even without me saying anything, Rinna had understood what I was feeling inside. I swung the bat, urging her again to walk. Rinna looked back and forth between me and the bat, and started walking hesitantly, then stopped again. Bato. It's very cute. Rene guarded herself while pointing at me holding the bat. She may have realized that I wasn't planning on using this bat for baseball. I lowered the bat, but still guardedly opened the way for her. Oh, man. I don't know. Like, like, I get it, but at the same time, it is making me a little bit sad. When she's not, you know, putting needles in your food and giving you the death glare, she is kind of cute. There was nothing else she could protest. She passed by me timidly so as to not set me off. As I watched her pass by, she stopped completely after having barely moved at all. Oi, touch the mother now. Then a powerful gust blew past us, barraging my face with dust. The dust got into my eyes and clouded my vision. While rubbing my eyes with my left hand, I swung blindly with the bat in my right, protecting the small opening I had presented. But Rinna didn't even try to attack during that opening. Attack me? No, she hadn't budged an inch. I could tell from the sound of her fluttering skirt in the wind. 
As her skirts settled, so did the silence. At that moment, the voice inside me immediately warned me of the impending danger. I was caught by surprise. The smell of the air had changed. Without me realizing it, the air around me suddenly felt like a calamity was about to befall me. It was like the air had suddenly become invisible concrete, like Rena and I were locked in the space. Rena didn't move an inch. Also unable to move, I stared at her back. Rena was the first to break the silence. Instantly, she altered her stance. I felt like I had just witnessed her shift from Rena into that other person who looks like Rena. But the voice was one who I knew well, which filled me with a kind of bewildering pity. Carelessly, I felt relief upon hearing that pitiful voice. Uh. Ah. Ano? Sono. Gomen ne. Sono. Kite mo ii? Too shy to even turn around, Rena squeezed her voice out desperately. As she trembled. Nanda yo. Ano ne? Ano ne? You know, for, for bat, bato things. The question Rena asked was by no means unexpected. I'd do what I want. Alright, the truth is this is turning into <laughs> into a sports anime. Keiichi's turning into a baseball master. Sorry, I messaged someone earlier and they didn't start messaging me till now. Wow. I think she just I think she called you weak right there. You can't be a part of your baseball anime now. I couldn't tell what kind of answer she was looking for, and I was getting tired of answering her. I mean, it is a little. Yeah, I know. She answered instantly, and that annoyed me slightly. Can't a man suddenly want to play baseball? I tried to sound a bit more threatening to end the conversation. Until my suspicions about Rena were cleared, I had no obligation to answer her questions. Rena still didn't turn around and spat out words of apology one after the next. I yelled loudly at her, causing her to flinch like she had been struck. Seeing her in such a pathetic state caused my heart to ache sorely. But even though she was afraid, she stubbornly kept herself from moving. Before I was able to threaten her again, Rina asked her final question. What did she mean by the bat was the same? I had no idea what she was talking about. I wonder who this bat belonged to. Is this Rena's bat? I was thinking about that earlier, but it kind of passed out of my mind. Even still, Rena didn't turn around. After inhaling deeply, she screamed. Oh, it's Satoshi Kun! You borrowed Satoshi Kun's bat. I was. Th that was another thing I considered because he did mention it smelled moldy, which means it might have been in there for a while. Satoshi. Upon hearing that name out of the blue, 
I became dumbfounded for a brief moment. By Satoshi. Did she mean the student who transferred out last year? No, that couldn't be. Rinna tried to cover it up by saying he transferred, but Oishi-san told me quite clearly that he was missing. He was the student who sat at my desk up until last year. He was believed to have been demoned away by Oyashira Sama's curse. I didn't know the details about his disappearance. The aunt he lived with was killed the night of the Watanagashi by a drug addict, and not long after that he suddenly vanished and was now missing. That Satoshi and I were... what? My gaze fell to the bat in my hands. Could it be... Satoshi... Who would you all... Ho ji wo It was a bit difficult to see, but that's what was written on the white tape at the end of the bat. I see. So this was Satoshi's bat. Oh... Oh... This... This was Satoshi's bat. Bat! I didn't use it, so I bought it. Okay, that's it. Yeah, let's get angry again. The way Rena said that made it seem like this bat was something that should never be touched. Like it was some sort of offering at a shrine, or a memento of the deceased. I could only stand there, perplexed and unable to respond. Rena continued speaking without waiting for a reply. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. Rinna was talking about more than just the bat belonging to Satoshi. Yeah, he, he wanted his own anime baseball too, but no, no baseball anime for him. And what a nerd. Poser thinks he can play baseball with the rest of us. Well, what about it? I closed my mouth before I could say that out loud. Listen carefully, Keiichi. Rena is trying to tell us something important. Or, you know, lying to us, possibly. And let me guess, he stole a bat from the kid that had disappeared the year before, too? The plot thickens. <laughs> oh man, that sounds just like me. Then one day he suddenly... what? Rinna had swallowed her words. Rinna's sudden silence brought a hush back to the surrounding area. It was then that I could finally digest the contents of the entire conversation. She was saying my chain of actions was exactly the same as Satoshi's. What was the meaning of this? Up until just now, I'd forgotten all about Satoshi. I'd never paid much thought to him in the first place. Not only that, I didn't even know anything of what he'd done. My actions today should have been my own creation, after all the planning I had done. But th they had been the exact same as Satoshi's? Then Satoshi... No, more importantly, where Sayaka, if both Satoshi and I acted the same, then there was a really good possibility that what happened after would be the same. Lena. I'm glad you asked. We all surrounded him and beat him with the bat he was carrying. Rinna knew. She knew what became of Satoshi. No, forget about what happened to a guy in the past. Rinna knew what was going to happen to me. With that, I grabbed Rinna's shoulder violently and forcibly turned her around to face me. Oh. As I faced her, I felt a jolt travel through my entire body. Oh, you set her off now! 
I was waiting. I knew it was going to happen. It was that person I didn't know. At least, it definitely wasn't the Rene Ryugu I'd been talking to up until now. The voice just now didn't have a trace of the trembling or emotion that it had before. The amount of regret I felt for turning her around so carelessly was unsurpassed. That gaze that pierced like a cold needle. The smile on her face that invoked an image of having been carved out by a knife. Chills went down my spine. My mind froze under a layer of rhyme. Both of Rinna's eyes pierced through mine, leaving me unable to look away. As if to remind me of the fear from that time before, Rinna brought her face close to mine, so close I could feel her breath. Her face had filled my entire field of vision. Then, her sharply shaped lips grew even sharper. Like the curve of a crescent moon, she grinned. After a short pause, Renner repeated the same words again. Transferred meaning what? What Renner meant must have been some new definition of transfer that I was previously not aware of. My throat and lips dried up. I couldn't even acknowledge what I just heard. It's like, it's like when a bad guy, you know, says, ah, oh, I need you to clean this up, you know, and, and by clean it up, they mean like, you know, murder the person violently and then, uh, you know, make a, make a lesson out of them kind of thing. You know, bad guy speak. All I could do was swallow down my own saliva. It would seem that Rinna saw that as an odd. She pulled her gaze back and spryly stepped back two, three paces. As she did, my legs, my legs gave out and I fell to my knees pathetically. Rinna, and me on my knees underneath her emotionless smile. That had to be a very odd sight indeed. Seeing me in that pathetic state, she neither scoffed at me nor held out her hand. But I could neither stand nor escape with her gaze shooting through my eyes. There was undoubtedly a metal bat in my hand. But right now... It was useless to me. I was like a fly caught in her web. Heavy sweat beaded all over my body. I could feel it dripping from my skin. Rinna finally released me from that cage of time after what felt like an eternity. But her question was missing something important and was incredibly vague. Once again, I swallowed hard, urging her on. Na, what did she not want me to do? Tenko. Oh no, I'd hate to transfer Rena. Oh please, no, I'm stuffed. I couldn't eat another bite. Transfer on to the next life. Satoshi and I had what? All of my well-planned actions throughout the day turned out to have been nothing more than a reenactment of what Satoshi had done. Satoshi, had he really been in the same situation as I was right now? The friends he had gotten along with had changed suddenly, and for no reason, at least none that I had noticed, planned to kill him. Then, fearing for his life as I am, he got a bat to protect himself and carried it around every day to practice his swing. And then one day, suddenly, he transferred. <laughs> my blood went cold, causing a prickling sensation to course through my veins. Starting near my heart, it radiated outwards, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, chilling every part of me without recourse. What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? Was Satoshi still at wherever he transferred to? Was he the only one who would be able to understand me? Would he be able to tell me why it all ended up like this? More importantly, where's Saika? Where did he transfer to? What did she mean by transfer? What did she mean by transfer? 
Before I knew it, I was at my front door. The frigid knob was hard to turn. Was nobody home? It wasn't that odd of an occurrence. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the single key attached to my first seal keychain. So fuzzy. Mm, yeah, something bad's happened here. I stepped into the entryway. Just as I was about to take off my shoes, a chill ran down my spine. Someone had entered right behind me. Like a classmate messing around, standing right up against my back. You're kidding, right? It had to be my imagination. Logically speaking, it was impossible for someone to be able to hide their presence within my personal space, all the way through the door. But there was undoubtedly someone behind me. Hey now, hey now, Keiichi. How do you know they're there, even though they're behind you? Because I could hear the sound of flowing hair. There's no other reason I'd hear that sound. That was the presence. Because I could hear the sound of them blinking. Keiichi Maibara. There's no way you could hear that. My most base instincts were warning me of the presence. Common sense was telling me that it was just my imagination. It was just my imagination. There was no one behind me. I began to erase the mental image of an eerie figure standing behind me. But at the same time, I asked myself, if there is nobody, then what was I feeling? As an uncomfortable sensation crawled up my spine. Actually, wouldn't it be better if there was someone there? If there was nobody there when you turned around, would you be able to accept that? I'd be able to answer all those questions just by looking behind me. But I didn't have enough courage to even do that simple task. Oh, right. I could try speaking to them. The person behind me might answer me. It was a random thought. I didn't care how I went about it, just so long as I didn't have to turn around. If I had calmed down and thought about it, I would have known that that wouldn't have solved anything. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Anyone there? I spoke in such a hoarse, broken voice that I couldn't believe it was my own. I could almost feel them contemplating their response. I'm really glad Keiichi isn't like a complete idiot, like he seems to have pretty sharp senses. I felt it. There's no way I should be able to do that. Calm down, Keiichi. It's all in your head. That time, I was certain I heard it. As if hesitantly trying to answer my inquiry, I was certain I could hear the sound of someone inhaling. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it clearly. It was a girl. A young girl. I didn't know who, but a tiny speck of courage in me, however reckless it was, inspired a primal yet fitting solution to this current predicament. A scream. All the force in my body released from my lungs and through my throat, ceasing all the thought processes in my head. Suppressing all my thoughts and emotions, I began to collapse like a house of cards, somehow managing to twist my body and look back as I did so. <laughs> Sorry, this this description is like mildly humorous. Like, imagine if there's no one there and his mom's about to say, welcome home, Keiichi. And then all of a sudden, he like screams, falls on the ground and turns around. <laughs> But I, I, I kind of feel like it's going to be a bit more sinister than that. It was definitely there. Right there. Somebody was there. Until the moment I turned around. Until I brought the area behind me into my field of vision. They were definitely there. Falling face up, my eyes traced the remnants of the presence suspended in the empty space. It couldn't be. They were invisible. They looked like they weren't there, but they were actually still standing there. As I screamed, all the emotions I was holding back burst free in a violent wave. However, I was decidedly calm as my emotional dam collapsed. 
the turbulent wave of pent-up emotions was skillfully diverted into a torrent of aggression. That emotion was definitely required to extricate myself from the bizarre situation happening right in front of me. In my state of heightened lucidity, I entrusted my body to the fury. The metal bat held firm in my right hand as if drawn there by a magnet. A mid-level sweep would be the hardest attack to dodge. I remembered reading something like that from a book about swordsmanship or something. Oh, he's gonna club his mom. Oh, I hope so. I brandished my will to fight. The afterimage of that algamation of metal flashed as it swung from left to right, beating against the entryway. What'd you hit? The bat slammed into the right wall, the tip rebounding violently. Very calmly, I transferred the force of the rebound into a sweep to the left. Are you just breaking crap now? The door of the shoe cupboard was split into pieces. Those two swings whipped through the empty space, but they seemed to have a great psychological impact on the enemy. I could feel the panic emanating from that space. I want to listen to this for a second. Hold on, let me turn this up. This music track is really interesting because I, I, I have the music turned a little bit low so it doesn't like... I can hear myself think, you know? And, uh... You can kind of hear like a... I don't know the best way to describe it. It kind of sounds like a... Like a rattling wood sound, almost. And you can hear it, if you're wearing headphones, you can hear it go from your left to your right ear. I'm pretty sure YouTube will keep stereo. I think it does. And, uh, and I can just barely hear it, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, definitely unnerving, I'd have to say. As the track, I'm sure, is set out to be. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. The attack wasn't the only thing required. I extracted the bat from the cupboard it was embedded in and screamed as I spun my entire body around in a large arc. He's ah! doing a spin attack now. My scream shook the air, imbuing my ferocious swing with even more destructive power. Man, your mom's gonna be so upset at you now. You threw your, your uh, not mochi against the wall. And now you're breaking the cupboard and probably smacking the crap out of the walls. Crack. Without mercy or restraint, my violent strike, with certain, certainly fatal force behind it, shattered the top of the cupboard. None of my attacks struck the enemy, but my ferocity had certainly seemed to impact them. Breathing heavily, my entire body soaked in sweat, the invisible enemy, there but not there, dispersed. When I was certain that the enemy had retreated, I locked the front door and latched the chain. No way. Had it only feigned retreat and was now inside my house? Once again, I channeled my aggression and searched to the house for the presence. But it was gone. I kind of wonder still if maybe just maybe KT actually is like mentally unsound in some way. Because... You could certainly, you know, explain away a lot of the things that have happened to an unreliable narrator like Keiichi here. I don't know for sure, but I mean, it, clearly he's he's currently at a state of mild hysteria, I'd say. <sighs> like I'm not I'm not entirely sure if his fears are founded or unfounded with the person possibly standing right behind him, but he's clearly in a state of hysteria where he's decided to start attacking things that he thinks might be there. And it started damaging furniture. And I'm not exactly sure how he's going to get out of this one. Like, I feel like as a parent, if you came home and found your crap smashed like that, you might want to take your kid to, like, a therapist or something. I don't know. I had succeeded in fending it off. At that moment, the tension drained from my body and I let out a deep sigh of relief. All of the emotions I'd been holding back chaotically merged together and began to flood out. 
A hodgepodge of fear, accomplishment, and disbelief all mixed together and began to flow through my body. Unable to deal with each individual feeling, I beat them all back with the strongest. Exhaustion. Even in this moment I remained composed, 